Now, Angla, I got to ask you this before we start. It looks like Martin and Teal both got their hairs dyed blonde. How close were you to dyeing your hair blonde as well? Close. <laughs> I don't want to look like, uh, no, I don't want to look like Cisco. <laughs> I, I was not even close. Can you hear me? I know we got media from all across the globe here. Yeah. Questions. Yeah, Hugh, you great. We're going to jump straight into the first question. We got a deputy direct, deputy editor from Do One Sports from Myanmar, and he wants to ask two questions to you. He said that they were worried about your condition because you had tested positive for COVID before the event. What can you say about your health condition? Are you in the same fitness condition as before the COVID test? I, I was in good shape before the COVID test. Uh... And then after the COVID test, uh, I was, uh, my cardio wasn't as good for like a couple of weeks, but after that, it, it went back to normal. Uh, I'm at 100%. I am, I feel better than I've ever, been. is better than it's ever been in the last five years. So this Friday, you're going to see the best version of me. That's a scary situation for a lot of people. The second question here is, how do you prepare to win for this fight against the Ritter? Uh, pretty simple. Uh, put a high pressure on him uh, and put him out. Fairly simple game plan. We like it. Our next question here is from Jude of Overtime Heroics MMA. In your last bout, you KO'd Brandon Vera. Have you ever thought about moving up and challenging Brandon for the one heavyweight title? and to be the first three-division world champion? No, not really. You know, what uh, What inspires me is to be the best version of myself, and I feel like uh, middleweight is the best uh, place for me. Uh, my body feels the best at, at, uh, at that weight class. So let's keep, you know, doing me instead of worrying about what other people think and what, you know, uh, other expectations. From your training videos, it looks like you've been really working on the strength and conditioning with uh, Dr. Peacock over there at Sanford MMA. You feel like that's going to be a big change in for you? <laughs> you? You know, that's not all we do, right? It's not just strength and conditioning that we do. <laughs> we do a lot of other stuff. It's just that we post pictures from strength and conditioning. Um, Got to flex for the gram. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. We've been working hard, hard on, 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 our, uh, on our kickboxing as well as our wrestling, you know. We have the best coaches at Sanford. Um, phenomenal, you know, striking coach, uh, uh, Henry Hoof, he's amazing. And then we also have, you know, Greg Jones and Kami Barzini helping us with our wrestling. Um, you're going to see a better version of myself. And we also added, you know, the Burns BJJ. Um, so our BJJ is going to get better as well. Uh, so we're going to be a much better uh, mixed martial artist for sure. Oh, and 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 Wagner Rochas, Wagner Rochas uh, has been helping us out as well. He's a jiu-jitsu world champion, you know, and and uh, he, he's been a, a great addition to our team as well. Man, that really is an incredible team you guys have over there. We got a next question here from BBC Burmese. Question is: I understand it took 31 hours to get to Singapore. Do you have any jet lag, and how do you adjust yourself in Singapore? And do you think that affects? Your final week of training? Uh, final week of training, we just taper, keep everything sharp, you know. So uh, 31 hour was the longest flight, I would say, that I took uh, to, to get over here. Uh, but it's okay. It, it was a very, you know, a very empty flight. So um, the travel wasn't as bad. It wasn't as stressful, you know. Uh, before, when, when there's a lot of, you know, people traveling with you, it's a little bit more stressful now that there isn't that many people traveling. Uh, it's less stressful, and uh, I'm I'm used to being back and forth and getting acclimated to this different time zones. So it, it's not bad, you know. I'm I'm getting eight hours of sleep at night now, so it, it's great. Yeah, I'm sure you had a lot of experience going from the U.S. into Myanmar. We have another question here from Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Give us your thoughts on the matchup with Reiner the Ritter. Obviously, he's a lifelong martial artist with a strong judo background. Do you see him as your toughest opponent to date? Um, 
every opponent that's in front of me is the toughest opponent to date, you know, and that's how I put myself in. And I put myself as them being the, the most dangerous opponent that, you know, up to date. So yes, he is. And he's uh, 12 and 0 for a reason. He's very confident. Um, but that O is going to go on Friday. Jay Anderson from Cape Side Press again with another question. Your entrances, entrances in mm -hmm. Myanmar have been legendary. You won't have that crowd here at the Inside the Matrix event. Are you expecting a different feeling when you walk out to the cage this time? Yeah, definitely a, a, a different feeling. But uh, I know how to level my, you know, my 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 mental state. So so it's okay. It's not it's not going to be an issue. Uh, and fortunately for me, I've cornered a couple of my teammates at Sanford in in an arena that was empty. You know, so that helps for sure. Um, this year has been, um, I would say, like a blessing in disguise because I got to experience, um, I got to experience COVID firsthand. I got to experience uh, as a mixed martial artist. I got to experience uh, cornering people in an empty arena, being in an empty arena, and I also got to. Uh, get, you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from the trainers and the coaches. So for me, it was a blessing in disguise. It must have been nice to be home as well, to be with the newly born daughter. Congratulations on that as well. Thank you. We got another question here from... Another question here from Andrew Whitelaw. How did you find the experience of doing an interview alongside Reiner? Have you learned anything interesting or important from what he's been saying about how you might approach the fight. We know he's talked about you, him wanting to take you down to the ground and submit you. Did we do the interview together, Andrew? I think we did. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's much more respectful when uh, we're in the same room. Uh, and, and that's what I figured, you know, but it, it is what it is. Um, it's going to be a good matchup. He, I know what he's going to do. He knows what I'm going to do. It's uh, who's able to impose the game plan. Talking about jujitsu, your last couple of bouts have been mainly striking. You've been able to show that amazing power of yours. You've talked about how you've been working with Wagner Rocha and all the incredible team you have over there. Do you think you'll be show that side of your game? Yeah, I mean, my foundation uh, is uh, to MMA is jujitsu, but as a as a Burmese man, uh, leway and you know striking is in our blood, uh, so. But I'm 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 pretty sure like I'm maybe like I'm I'm pretty 99% sure that I've been doing jujitsu longer than he has. Uh, I started in like 2003 2004. So um, him making claim that he would submit me in 10 seconds it's uh, outrageous. I agree. James from Overtime Heroics asks not to look past this fight. But are we going to see you defending that light heavyweight world title anytime soon? I'm down with anything. Uh, line up the, you know, the contenders. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to stay active. Uh, this year, like I said, has been very, uh, very good to me as far as my body goes. Uh, so I'm, I'm just ready for anything. Yeah, you look in incredible shape. Nick Atkin from South China Morning Post asks, which fight has been more difficult to prepare for, Brandon Vera or Ryan Ritter? I would say Brandon Vera was a tougher uh, camp to train for because of the circumstances. Um, I was able to, you know, with the lockdown, I was able to really focus and just uh, take the time, you know. And, and, and so for me, time and preparation is what made it easy. Question here from Andrew Whitelaw. Who is the most hardcore trainer at Sanford? Definitely Henry Hoof. He's there before us. He's there after us. He puts his heart and soul into that, you know, that place. Um, w without him, we, we wouldn't be there, you know. I see him uh, jumping into the sparring sessions too sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but he's getting old though. <laughs> he's, he's, he's sitting over there. He's about to kick my ass. 
Hey, you still got it. Question from James Reese of Overtime Heroics. Sorry, question from James James Reese of Overtime Heroics. It is expected that Rhino is going to take this fight to the ground. Has this led to you putting any extra focus on that during the camp? Or is your game plan the same as usual? Look to knock him out. I'm going to stuff his head on the floor. I'm going to smash his face on the floor if he tries to take me down. I'm going to smash his face in the canvas. Now, you look like you're super motivated for this one. This one's going to be incredible. I'm just excited, man. We have a few more it's, questions it's, here, Angla. It's been a year, man. I'm just excited. This is kind of weird, you know. I usually get a get to talk to you guys in person, you know. Now it's over the Zoom or whatever it is. Um, but I'm just excited to be back, man. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that excitement, man. Really pumped for this one. We got another question from Tom Taylor, BJPen.com. This one's a good one. What's scarier, being a beekeeper or being a prof professional fighter? Definitely being a beekeeper. <laughs> when I was a beekeeper, I felt like my life was passing before me, and that's the worst feeling in life, you know, not not being able to attain what you what what, what you what you're supposed to live to be, you know, uh, and uh, and at least I know. Look, there's nothing there's nothing worse than not going after your dreams you know so for me being a fighter mma fighter it's it, it's it's been my dream and me getting to chase it is the best feeling i don't i don't care about the belts i don't care about losing i don't care about anything you know me going out there and getting to do what i love is the most rewarding thing and the best thing about my life uh so i would say being a beekeeper was a you know more it's a scarier job. Now, with your with the birth of your new daughter, and you get to spend a lot of time with your son as well. How much has that been extra motivation for you? That's my reason why. You know, it's a reason why I do what I do. Wake up, uh, go to training when I'm sore, uh, and then when I come home, seeing that smile uh, is a reason why I'm able to do it and keep going. Fight Game Asia asks, what do you see in Reiner de Ritter that tells you he is a worthy opponent? And what is your opinion of him as a fighter? He finds ways to win, you know. Uh, he's 12-0. Um, I really thought he would have a lot of trouble with his last two opponents, you know, who are jiu-jitsu black belts as well. Um, and he finds ways to win. So you got to respect that, you know. you got to respect that that he's, he's hungry, he's young, he's... Uh, He's very lengthy, you know, and, 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 and he lives in Holland. So I'm sure he's training with high level kickboxers. So I can't just think, oh, you know, my kickboxing is going to be too much for him, but it's going to be too much for him. Last two questions here, Zangla, then we'll let you go. Rhino de Ritter is a streaking undefeated contender. Do you think being undefeated is an important aspect of martial arts? I don't think so. I think just becoming a better version of yourself it is the most important thing, you know? Some, some, like, like, like if I go back and fought the guys that, you know, I lost to right now, I think I would, I would beat them. But, but the thing is, you know, uh, those losses made me who I am. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traded. But uh, some people, you know, who are undefeated, they have that confidence and it's good for them, you know. Like, like, like the saying goes, you know, when you win, it builds confidence, but when you lose, it builds character. You know, for me, uh, I'll take my losses uh, over being undefeated. I agree with you, my man. One more question from Mike Clifton of Low Kick MMA. If one championship ever offered you a left way bout, would you take that one? Hell yeah, for sure I would. Why Ooh. not? That'd be I incredible, got, I, man. I, I got one more question for you. Talk about. Uh, go ahead, sorry. man. Go ahead. Show him a steel pipe I again. I, I got the steel pipe. That way it would be fun. That'll be fun. I got one more for you. Talk about how much Martin has been a help for you. You guys have created an incredible bond having fly out and live with you guys. Teal as well, you have them all flying out. How much has that helped you 
being in a camp and preparing for that bout? Yeah, I think it helps all of us, you know, uh, as a unit, it, it helps us grow. It helps us stay focused. Um, being surrounded by people with the same goal really helps with your journey, you know. Um, if you surround yourself with people that are on a different goal, different path, it's a little bit harder to focus. Uh, for me, it was it's so easy to focus because they're in there in camp with me. They, they and, you know, out of camp, we're just doing things that are uh, helping us to get better when we when we go back, you know, to train. So, like like like, um, I mean, you you everybody knows that we train at Sanford, but people don't know that after Sanford, we go to do recovery together. You know, we eat meals that are good for us together. So it's really helpful for sure. That's all from us, Angla. Thank you so much for your time. Really good to see you and talk to you. All the best this Friday night. Likewise, my friend. All right, I'll see you soon.